food, drinking, shopping, texting, social media, all these little things that will make us feel good, even if just for a moment, are right at our fingertips. We live in a time of unprecedented overconsumption. In her book, Dopamine Nation, Finding Balance in the Age of Indulgence, Dr. Anna Lemke explores how to manage all of these compulsions. And Dr. Lemke joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I, I once had a guest tell me that uh, in our society, we find it very difficult to be alone with our thoughts, uh, and, and thus leading to all these different distractions in our, our lives these days. Why is that? Well, I think many of these things are learned behaviors, and we are constantly plugged into some kind of device, a podcast, music, in our cars, uh, in, in the elevator, in the dentist's office. We're not very good at silence, but of course, silence is really necessary in order to acquaint ourselves with ourselves. So I think that's one of the things we need to maybe relearn how to do. And dopamine is this is this thing in the brain that it gives you this rush and you get that from what social media food all kinds of things all these things give you that rush. Yes. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It's essential to the experience of pleasure, reward, and motivation. The more dopamine that's released and the faster it's released in response to a drug or a behavior, the more reinforcing that drug or behavior is. So when we think about addiction, everybody's familiar with the idea of getting addicted to drugs or alcohol. But what we're seeing is more and more people getting addicted to highly reinforcing behaviors as well. These are things like just being on our device, playing video games, shopping, uh, pornography, uh, many, many different types of online activities. Food has become drugified. Even things that we typically think of as healthy, like exercise, has in a way become drugified. How do we drugify something? We make it more reinforcing, more potent. We make it more accessible. Uh, we make it more uh, uh, more novel, so we have more varieties of it than ever before. We make the access easier. Um, enumerating things makes them more reinforcing, yeah, so makes dopamine. You're, you're describing social media and <laughs> TikTok, and uh, there's growing anxiety yes. and depression among, among teens. Uh, is there a role for government to play to step in here to try and break this uh, addiction so it's not just a, a free-for-all with these social media companies who, who design these algorithms to keep our kids uh, addicted? Absolutely. So this is not just an individual problem or the responsibility of families or parents. This is something that's a large societal problem. And schools, uh, you know, federal agencies, the, the, the companies that make and profit uh, from these consumer products are all responsible. I think a good way to analogize this is to think about cigarettes. So for example, we don't sell or market cigarettes to minors, right? Um, we tax cigarettes. We warn people about the dangers of cigarettes. So when we think about social media and other online Online digital drugs. We need to do the same. We need to have guardrails. Uh, we need to think about how to how to tax or monetize or restrict access. We need to make sure that children don't have unlimited access. We need to warn people about the dangers, including the very real danger of addiction to digital drugs. All right. In addition to just staying off social media, what are some other solutions for this? You say exercise will give you a boost, and what else can you do? Well, I think one of the first things. The, one of the, the most important first steps is to identify what our drug of choice is. So what releases a lot of dopamine in my brain may not release a lot of dopamine in your brain and vice versa. And once we've identified our drug, to really initiate what I call a dopamine fast, try to abstain from that drug of choice, whether it's sugar or cannabis or alcohol or TikTok, try to abstain for four weeks, recognizing that the first two weeks will be really painful. We will go into withdrawal. The universal symptoms of withdrawal are anxiety, irritability, insomnia, dysphoria, and craving. But if we can get through those first 10 to 14 days, weeks three and four get better. And at week four, typically patients will feel a lot better, a lot more joy in their lives, more ability to be present. And then we can think about, okay, now going forward, how do I reincorporate this drug? If I choose to reincorporate it, how do I reincorporate it into my, into my life so I can have a healthier ongoing relationship with it? Well, the book is called Dopamine Nation. For more, you can check out Anna's website. Thank you, Anna. Thank you.
You're welcome. Thank you. 